The ruling All Progressive Congress may face challenges after President Buhari leaves office, Senate President Ahmed Lawan claims. And the Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju charges youth to join politics, saying social media won't transform lives. This is Boss Politics, and I'm Osaogi Ogbonwa. Welcome once again to PLOS Politics. The Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, has issued a warning that the ruling All Progressive Congress will have a difficult time after the exit of President Muhammadu Buhari in 2023. According to him, the APC must start sustaining the goodwill and legacies of the present administration. Furthermore, he revealed that the reason, the, or rather why the party has not fulfilled its promise to Nigerians, is due to a feud between the National Assembly and the executive arm of government. Meanwhile, a senator, Ibrahim Shekarao, a former governor of Kano State and serving senator representing Kano Central uh, Senatorial District, urged the ruling APC to field a southerner in its presidential, or as its presidential candidate rather, in 2023. Joining us to discuss this is Ugochuku Zekwe, an APC chieftain. Good evening and thanks for joining us, sir. Yeah, good evening, my dear. Great to have you. And let's uh, start with too. let's start with trying to understand uh, to the best uh, that we can the statement by the Senate President Ahmed Lawan that the APC will have a difficult time after President Muhammadu Buhari's exit in 2023. What would you say he meant by that? Anyway, uh, you know, um, let me start by saying that. Um, that statement is um, a personal opinion of, uh, of uh, the Senate president. Um, this is a leader in our party, the man leading the Senate. But uh, of course, you know that uh, it may be wrong for me to start um, um, joining issue with that statement because uh, this is somebody that is sitting on a different table. Uh, a higher one for that matter. So from the angle he's uh, saying things may be different from where I am seeing things. Um, even though I'm a, I'm a chieftain of APC uh, from Imo State. The truth is that um, if you remember how PC um, came into existence. Coming together of some political parties, some of them we call uh, US state parties. And um, the Mr. President and uh, some other leaders like uh, Bola Tinumbu, and indeed some other leaders happened to be men actors then um, bringing other people on board. Maybe, just maybe, what transpired that time and what is happening today may not capture the original intention of um, all those leaders when they came together. But somehow, they as party men and women have been managing the nation have been managing the party to the extent that Mr. President, um, they've been giving him all the needed respect. They've been giving him all the needed support. And to all of us who are in the party, including myself, the president is not doing badly. He's doing well. Some people may, may argue against it. But I, I know the angle I'm coming from. Nigeria is a very difficult nation to govern. It's a difficult nation to, 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 to handle. And uh, if you look, you look at it from that angle and to put things in proper perspective, let me pick um, security as one of the uh, examples I want to use. Yes, killings are going on um, all over the place, if you like. But it did not start today. The only thing we can tell ourselves 
truly and frankly is that if Mr. President is not doing what he's supposed to do as a leader and as the president of this nation, by now, most of us, whether you're living in Lagos or you're living in Abuja, would have run away from our homes, places where we do our businesses, because the way and manner these people, the so-called Boko Haram people, started. At a time, people couldn't do their business in Abuja. They were bombing a lot of places. And then um, you can see that fighting terrorism, especially what we call guerrilla warfare, is not something that is easy. It's a war that if you're not careful enough, it can consume anybody. So, so, Mr. Anzakwe, uh, I, I, we're going to stick with um, your thoughts on security. Um, from what you've said, the president, um, according uh, at least from what he's doing, he's doing well enough, you know, in your books. Um, so, I, I want you know to you know give us an example of when you know you may have been able to say that the president may have not done well enough as a commander in chief of the armed forces of Nigeria, at what point, you know, will, you know, you maybe have given him a low score with regards uh, security? Um, you know, right now, it took him, uh, let me use the service chief that he changed. It took him a longer time to change the service chiefs who came on board with him. Uh, even when people were complaining, shouting. But I think if you ask him, he may know the reason why he allowed them to stay, to stay that long. But for me, as a political watcher, not now as his party man, as a political watcher and as a Nigerian, I believe that when people are shouting and when people are complaining, that these guys um, were not doing well. It behoves on him to look deep into those complaints and see if it would have been better for him to change them as at that time people were complaining. So that's one of the a a areas. But you know, this is a president that was once a, a military man. What he knows about warfare and combatant activities, you and I would don't know. So we may be looking at it from peripheral angle, but as somebody who garnered enough experience that knows what uh, war is all about and the military activities is all about, so so we may have reasons. Yeah, well, um, unfortunately, we, we may not have time to go, you know, in detail with regard to security because I'm I'm sure the you know people who have lost family members, uncles, aunties, mothers, brothers, sisters in their thousands in the last uh, couple of years may not agree with your views concerning the president's efforts with securing lives and property. And of course, those who have also been kidnapped and lost their lives um, to the hand, in the hands of uh, kidnappers in, in you know, numerous parts of Nigeria today. Um, but I, I want us to go back to the Senate president and his statements. Um, uh, he's talking about a legacy, and it's how it's, it's important that the APC leaves a, le a lasting legacy uh, so that I they will survive beyond to, I was 2023. Only to a kind of a kind of background. <clears throat> now, in the party, if Mr. President leaves, there may or may not be problem, as Mr. President is is is, is making us to understand. To understand, um, there may be problem if the party refuses to put their ass together if they refuse to uh, cash in on areas of achievement of Mr. President. There may be a problem if the greedy ones continue to remain greedy. Because in a family, you have the good, the bad, and the ugly. But at the end of the day, like he, like he rightly advised, if the party members decide to cash in on the achievement of Mr. President and decide to work as a family, as one particular political party, they may continue to rule this nation and then and then make amends on areas where mistakes were made by Mr. President. So, and so at the same they... time, improve, improve on certain areas 
where Nigerians will, uh, will uh, also expect them to work on. All right, so if the, if the administration was to end tomorrow morning, um, what would you say are these achievements that the APC can cash in on of uh, President Mohamed Buhari? Okay, I, I have talked about security. Like I said, some people may say, um, this man is talking nonsense, but I, I have told you, for all I know and care <coughs> about security, the moment you start fighting historians and the country is not doing much, nobody, nobody will remain at home. Nobody will be, will, 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 will be sleeping in his house like we are all enjoying now. Um, in the course of fighting that, there are more casualties. So on the area of security, he has not done badly. Now, on the area of providing certain uh, level of infrastructure development, um, let me use the uh, Southeast as example because I'm from Southeast. He has done a lot of federal roads here. Uh, talk of uh, a road that, that work is ongoing now from Potakot to, to, to Enugu Road, um, 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 Oka to, to Enugu also. That is Anambra State to Enugu. Um, if you come to here, we we'll talk about Onicha to Were, to Were to Potakot. When you go there, you can see tremendous uh, um, uh, road, road uh, infrastructure development. And um, also, you, you know about uh, the Niger Bridge. That Niger Bridge is about 65% completed. If at the end of the day is completed, commerce, the economy of both the Southeast and South South will uh, boom, will improve. And most of other things, the, 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 the capacity building, the money that they have provided for youth empowerment, which even in will take uh, uh, benefited from. I can count and count and count. And then um, there are other things, even bringing the, the country to continue to fight to make the country remain um, uh, solid and one. You know, there's something that we have uh, failed to understand about Mr. President. That thing is, I have been in politics for a very long time. And I have seen presidents come and go. So many of them that ruled this nation before Mr. President uh, Muhammad Buhari came on board tried to amass wealth. You mentioned their name. You want to talk about how much they have, both in Nigeria and foreign banks. Today, you cannot discuss that with Muhammad Buhari. What well, people are talking about is that he's slow to action. He's slow to doing things. But I... Well, Mr. Nzeko, I, I, I'm not sure if we should praise um, uh, a, po a political a politician and a political leader for not stealing. Um, I'm guessing that's, you know, what it should be. That's, that's you know, how it is, 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 is society should run. Um, I'm, I don't know if we should praise... Um, um, the president for not amassing wealth like you've mentioned. And um, just before we go, you know, just to be clear, clear on what you've said, you know, that um, after more than 20 trillion naira debt uh, that we've, uh, the country currently is in, um, and six years, about six years in governance, you know, the things that we should, uh, Nigerians should point out and celebrate is the president's successes with regard to security and you know, the roads in the southeast and the second Niger Bridge. Um, and, you know, I mean, these are the things that you're saying that the APC should be able to cash in on as uh, the legacies of President Mohamed Buhari. No, no. You see, um, <laughs> you see you're coming from an angle of somebody who is, a, who is an economist uh, without uh, uh, thinking about uh, uh, the, the life of uh, people who live around him that need to eat. Because um, uh, uh, borrowing money, for instance, like you rightly mentioned, borrowing money, for instance, requires that the country economy must be protected. You don't need to allow the economy to collapse, no matter the kind of problem that you are having. And when you owe money, America is owing. Most countries are owing. It's not an offense for a country to owe money. So if you notice that your economy is going down and you also have the capacity to pay back in the next future, you need to do something to rescue the economy, to rescue your people. Have you ever seen somebody who does not have what it takes to borrow money, getting money from bank? 
So the country is still strong. Being strong means that they have the capacity to borrow. You understand? Because no nation will want to give you money if they don't see the potentials in you. All so right. Nigeria is still strong and they have the potential. That's why people are giving them money. And when that money is given, they can use it to lay some foundation foundation for the economy to grow. And when the economy grows, then we begin to talk about paying back. It's not the, Buhari is not the only student that has borrowed money. His predecessors did. So nobody will want the economy to collapse on his hands. All right. Um... Ugo Chukunzekwe, an APC chief, saying thank you very much for joining us on Plus Politics this evening. Uh, we look forward to uh, another conversation and uh, a longer one this time. Thanks for joining us once again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, Vice President Yemi Shimbaju advises Nigerian youths on how to change the future for the better. We'll be right back.